once upon a time, or maybe some day, in a faraway place that was right next door, down a secret trail that everyone knows, there lived, or didn't, a little fox. <laughs> What? Wait, what? What do you mean, Auntie's sick? But the show must go on. Stiff up a lip and all that. What? Oh. Oh, dear. Greetings and salutations, children, and welcome to Auntie Inari's house. Auntie's out sick this week, so I've, um, volunteered to house-sit for her. I'm a bit under the weather myself, but the show must go on. This week, we're going to be talking about the Jewish holiday of Purim. Purim is a holiday that commemorates the deliverance of the Jewish people from destruction at the hands of Haman, the prime minister to the king of Persia. It has been celebrated since at least the second century, and likely much longer. Purim is a joyous holiday, and has been likened to a Jewish Mardi Gras, or even Halloween in some ways. The story of Purim is not covered in the Torah, but rather in the Tanakh, and the requirements for observing the holiday are recorded in the Talmud. The story begins with a six-month feast ordered by King Ahasuerus for the Persian and Median armies and civil servants and princes of the 127 provinces of his kingdom. King Ahasuerus is assumed to be either Xerxes the first or second, though the first is the more likely of the two. During this feast, Xerxes becomes thoroughly drunk and orders his queen Vashti to display her beauty to the assembled crowd wearing only her crown. Vashti refuses, and in a rage Xerxes has her executed. Xerxes then orders that all of the young women in the kingdom should be presented to him in a sort of beauty contest, so that he may choose a new queen. Esther is one of these girls, and is instructed by her cousin and foster-father, Mordecai, not to reveal her origin as a Jew. Xerxes is immediately smitten with her and takes her as his queen. Shortly after, Mordecai overhears two guards plotting to kill the king. He reports the plot, and the guards are captured and hanged. Mordecai's actions are recorded in the daily records of the court. Xerxes appoints Haman as his prime minister, and at an encounter at the palace gates, Haman is offended by Mordecai, who refuses to bow down to him. Haman discovers that Mordecai is Jewish, but rather than seek revenge against Mordecai alone, he plots the destruction of the entire Jewish race within Persia. He obtains Xerxes' permission to do this by telling him that the Jews do not follow his laws and that the king should not allow them to live. Xerxes issues a decree that on the 13th of Adar, all citizens of the empire should be free to kill Jews and take their belongings. The date is chosen by Haman via Purim, or the casting of lots, a sort of gambling like rolling dice. 
When Esther discovers the plot, she fasts and prays for three days to gather the courage to approach the king about this problem. Appearing before the king without being summoned was punishable by death, so it was quite a dangerous thing for her to attempt. During the third day she seeks audience with the king, inviting Xerxes and Haman to feast that night. During that feast, she invites them to attend another feast on the following night. Following that feast, Haman once again encounters Mordecai, who refuses to bow before him. He is so infuriated that he has a gallows built to hang him the next day. That night, Xerxes cannot sleep, and has a servant read him the daily court records to help. He hears of Mordecai's service in the plot to murder him, and asks how the man was rewarded. To his surprise, the records indicate that no reward was given. At that moment, Haman appears, and Xerxes asks him, What should be done for the man the king wishes to honor? Haman, believing it to be himself the king is speaking of, replies, He should be dressed in the king's robes and paraded through the city on the royal horse. To his shock and dismay, the king orders him to do exactly that for Mordecai the following day. That evening Xerxes and Haman attend Esther's second feast. When the time is right, she reveals to the king that Haman is planning to exterminate the Jews, and that as she is Jewish, this also includes her. Xerxes is outraged and storms out of the room. Haman, sensing his impending doom, grabs Esther and begins to plead for his life, but at that moment Xerxes returns, and seeing Haman, believes that he is attacking Esther. He orders Haman to be hanged on the very gallows he built for Mordecai, and appoints Mordecai as his new prime minister. The royal edict, however, had already been issued, and could not be cancelled. Instead, the king issued a new decree that all Jews should be free to defend themselves against any threat. As a result, five hundred attackers and Haman's ten sons are killed during their attack on the Jews. Across the empire, seventy-five thousand Persians are killed by Jews defending themselves, and on the next day, another three hundred are killed at the walled city of Shushan. After the victory, Mordecai declares an annual celebration be held commemorating their salvation. Purim this year is on March the 4th, but the observance begins at sunset the day before. In Jerusalem and a small number of other cities which had walls at the time of the events of Esther, the holiday is celebrated on the following day, as the walled cities did not achieve their victory until then. Modern Jews celebrate the holiday by observing the four mitzvot, or obligations, which are listening to a public reading of the Book of Esther in the evening and again on the following morning, sending food and gifts to friends, giving charity to the poor, and eating a festive meal. The festival is quite exciting, and every adult who is not forbidden to do so for medical reasons is expected to become so intoxicated that they cannot distinguish between the phrases Cursed be Haman and blessed be Mordecai. Exactly how intoxicated this is, is a matter of debate, but the obvious intention is to become drunk enough to enjoy oneself thoroughly. There are plays and comedies based on the story of Esther, and often beauty contests are held in honor of her. In some places, costumes and masks are worn to celebrate, and those giving charity to the poor often wear masks whilst doing so, to preserve the dignity of the recipient and prevent them from feeling obligation to the giver. Though those giving charity to the poor are expected to see that the gift is well used the rest of the year, on Purim no questions are asked, and charity is given without regard to deservedness or need. Another tradition which has become common in celebrations of the holiday is the making and eating of hamantashen, or Haman's pockets which are triangular pastries filled with poppy seed or other fruit fillings. The Hebrew calendar, 
much like the Chinese, does not match the actual length of the year. Hence, the holiday comes slightly earlier each year until leap year, when a leap month is inserted to move the dates back to their proper time of year. In such years, Purim is celebrated during the leap month, also called the second month of Adar. There are many online resources you can use to learn more about the Purim holiday, its traditions and history. Now that you've learned the basics, we hope you will avail yourself of these resources to further educate yourself. I fear that's all the time we have for today, children. I thank you for your visit, and we look forward to seeing you here again next week, when Auntie will hopefully be back with us. Ahem. Until then, as Auntie would say, be safe and have fun. Thank you for watching this episode of Auntie Anari's House. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like or favorite on the video and subscribe for notification of future episodes. If you'd like to help the channel grow, be sure to share this video with your friends and family. Remember that pictures of yourself or you with friends and family can be sent to inarifanworks at gmail.com as well as any fan art you'd like Auntie to see. If you have a question, you can ask Auntie Inari at tumblr.com. You can follow at Auntie Inari on Twitter and at facebook.com slash Auntie Inari's house for updates on production schedule and special projects, as well as other fun and interesting information. Shoutouts go to the MCF Gaming, Mike H, GD Damon, Leona May, Marley444, and Dronox2010, who commented on the previous episode. Please be with us next week for another episode of Auntie Anari's House. Until then, Hagpurim Simeach. This is Mr. Narrator, signing off.